please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. When you do, don't forget to click on all. Because if you don't, you might not get notified of all of the videos. So make sure you click on all. And don't forget in the comp in the description area, please consider contributing to this particular ministry, either through Patreon or else through the PayPal. Both links are in the description box. There is one question Christians fear most. One question we can't possibly answer. One question that keeps us up at night. It's about time we take an honest look at it. Any Christian who spends more than five seconds talking to Muslims online will be asked, how can you believe that one plus one plus one equals one? Muslims are so incredibly proud of this objection that they post it over and over and over again. One plus one plus one equals one, right? One plus one plus one equals one, Christians answer. Christianity. God is one plus one plus one equals one. Islam, one equals one. Y'all should take a hit at the Islamic belief of one God. If you do, I know it would just be a bunch of lies saying, no, one is not equal to one. Christian in school taking a test. One plus one plus one equals three. Pass. Christian in church for 2,000 years before God. One plus one plus one equals one. Fail. Double standard. What about this guy in his madrasa trying to spell the word Christian? Fail. But you believe one plus one plus one equals one. Speak now, don't post a comment, then make it funny. You lying. When you say one plus one plus one equals one, that means either you're lying or you're illiterate. Which one is it? One plus one plus one equals one in Trinity. Well, at least that guy got it right. <sighs> Dr. David Wood explains it in a different way, although I do not explain it to the Muslims in the way that he later tries to explain it. But we Christians don't fear answering that question. We, some of us, may dread answering it to you Muslims because we already know you have the mindset of a P. Now, notice what I said and what I didn't say. I said you have a mindset. of a vegetable. I, 
I didn't say that you have a mind of a vegetable. We do this in hopes that you would use the mind that God gave you to really think through some of this stuff. But no, a lot of you Muslims have a mindset of a P. Because see, here is the thing. It was either Rob Christian or Christian Prince that have said it this way. Who cares if it's one or three or twenty or thirty or however many gods it is. Whatever religion it is, if it is the right one, however many gods it is. Let us find the right one. Let us find the right religion so that we may worship. Who cares, however many gods it is? If it is a million gods, then it is a million gods. Who cares? You Muslims has got this sad mindset that it has to be one. This is <coughs> excuse me, this is how I try to explain it. The royal family of God. Think of it as a royal family. There is a king, which is the Christian God, Allah. As in Daniel 3.25. This is where I get this name. Daniel 3.25 He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. This God is Allah. And I've got it right down here. This is the English phonetic translation. Okay. In the Greek, his name is Theos. Just like that of the Jesus Hebrew name is Yeshua, but translated into Greek is Jesus. Still the same person, but translated you go from Yeshua to Jesus and to English Jesus
All right. So this is where the Allah, and not Allah, Allah, comes from. child or the children and in this case like I said Yeshua Jesus Jesus and the servants and in this case the royal family of God is the Holy Spirit these three are separate but are as one family In a regular family, you have a mother, the father, and the children. You, uh, you then usually don't have a maid or a, or you do not have a, it is a, a, a servant, but you have a mother, a father, and the children, but yet they are all separate people and they are still a family unit. But there is still only one king. Yeshua is still the son. And Yeshua says this several times. He also says that he and his father are one, like in John 10.30. He says in John 14.28 that the father is greater than he. In Matthew 6.9, when he teaches us how to pray, he then teaches us to pray to the Father and to end the prayer in his name. Who is the prayer going out to? It is going to the Father. Jesus also says that he, okay, says that he and his father are one, which is the family concept. <laughs> Excuse me. Whew. He spoke in a language that humans can understand with occasionally preaching in a parable for a better understanding try reading the parable of the landowner Matthew 21 33 through 46 who did the landowner sin first the servant and then, it was the son. And then he came. Second, I think the biggest problem you Muslims are having in the Christian Bible, if you really read it at all, at which I doubt, you guys don't even read your own Quran, is that God is a title and not a name. There are several names that are, that are translated as God. 
and not all of them refer to as or refers to the Father or to the Son. Some of them refer and I only mention to to the ones that does refer to either the Father or to the Son in the uh, in the Old Testament. There are other times where it refers to that of a pagan god. And I believe that is where it is, where it may be confusing you. But God is a title, not a name. In Hebrew, Elohim. In Genesis 1. Verse 1, it says, In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Elohim. El is the family name. And Ohim, triune. Three working as one. The very first verse speaks of the Trinity. And then there is the name of the Father. One of the characteristics of God. In Greek, the name of the Father is translated as Theos. Okay. Oh, there is one that I am missing on this list. Wait a minute. Oh, what is it? How is that spelled? Well, I will come back to it since I am having a hard time getting it spelled right. Ah, I don't know where I can find it. Exodus 3. I am that I am. Nope. Oh. Moses. Okay, well, okay, back to on track. This is how 
I explain how one plus one plus one equals one. It is a very valid way to explain it. Every one is their own person, and yet together they are one royal family. Unlike Unlike in Islam, oh. huh, okay, I guess I know that I have a slide about the we. Let me put you on hold while I find it. It may take a while. All right, I'm back. Whoa. Uh, So we in the Quran, there can't be a royal we in Islam when they claim there's only one God. If Allah is only one, who, uh, who else did send messengers? And we have sent no messenger but with the language of his people, that he might make the message clear for them. If Allah is one, who else revealed the Quran? And this Quran is a blessed book which we have revealed, confirming And thus we have revealed to you an Arabic Quran. If thou, Muhammad, are in doubt as to what we have revealed, If Allah is only one, who else made the Quran, especially since it is supposed to be co-eternal with Allah? Verily, we made it a Quran in Arabic so that you may be able to understand. If Allah is only one, who else sent scripture? To thee, Muhammad, we sent scripture. And indeed, we have eased the Quran in your tongue that they might be reminded. And if we had made it a non-Arabic Quran, they would have said, Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran. If Allah is only one, who else sent Jesus? And in their footsteps, we sent Jesus, the son of Mary. And there are so many more. Verses. where Allah says 
says we. Oh, went the wrong way. There. Okay. Back to the right size. Wow, it's a cold morning this morning. I may need to turn up the heat. Okay. And that is the thing about saying the royal we. There has to be a king, a queen. And some children. For there to be a royalness to it. And you want to say that we have a problem? When we know that there are three who bear witness. When we know that there are three, it is just... A concept that either you cannot or do not want to understand. Which one is it? If it is that you choose not to understand, then yes, you have a pea brain. Otherwise, you need to stop thinking like a pea and start thinking like a human that you really are. This may seem like to be a little harsh, but this is done in a Christian love to hopefully get you to wake up. Wake up, my dear lost brothers and sisters in the Islamic faith. You are following a man-made religion. That a man that got mad because the Jews would not accept him as a prophet. Wake up.
thank you for coming all the way to the end of the video. We hope that you have learned. But now comes the call. The call to come to Jesus if you are not baptized. God's part was that he sent his only begotten son, John 3.16. Notice his only begotten son. There is other items where other people has been, been called a first son, but keep it in context that is not the begotten son. Jesus is his only begotten son. Jesus shed his blood for our sins. That the Spirit revealed God's word and his will. That is all God's part of our salvation. We need to hear God's word. Romans 10. John 6.44 We need to believe what we hear. Again, John 8.24 Repent of our sins. We are a sinner. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that he died and rose for our sins, for our iniquity. Romans 10, Acts 8. And then we are to be baptized. We are to be fully submerged. That of the Greek word, it is known as baptismo. Fully submerged is what that means. Okay, Mark sixteen and first, of, and also in first of Peter, and these are just a couple of the verses. For each one, there are a plethora of others to confirm these steps over and over and over. And then remain faithful. I will be talking about that in that of the video 49, which is talking about are we saved by faith or by works? And in video 50, which is talking about the other things that God has called us to do. Yes, do is a verb. It is an action. So, video 49, which is done, but it will not be released. See, whoops, are we saved by works? Part 1. I have got that one done, and it will be released on August 6th. This one that you are watching right now, it is video 48, which will be released August 5th. And then video 50 will be talking about the other things that we are called to do. Now. Like I said in video 49, we do them after we are saved, not to be saved. We do these things because we are saved. 
So, if you are not yet a Christian, I do strongly encourage you to be baptized. If you cannot be for some reason, whether if you are in a Islamic country or there is a drought going on or for some other reason, pray to God that he accepts your heart. Our God is a merciful God. If he knows that there are reasons why you cannot be baptized, I have faith, although I don't have any proof of it, but I have faith that he will accept your heartfelt prayer as a temporary substitute. After all, in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice animals as a temporary substitute until Christ came. Did you get that? Although I am not saying that you should then sacrifice a uh, animal, but there was a temporary item that was given to them to ask for forgiveness until Jesus came. So, let us know down in the comment section if you have decided to give your heart to God and give your whole being to God. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and have a blessed day. There is one more message coming up at the end. So, when are you Muslims going to get it? There is a problem. No, not a. There are several problems, potentially counting into the hundreds of problems. about Islam. And I don't know if I will have the time to cover them all. Instead, why don't you come to the one that says in John fourteen six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. These are Jesus' words. You can't get to the Father by any other means. Not by me, not by Hatun, not by David Wood, not by Dr. Al-Fadi, not by Joel Osteen, not by Anybody else that you can think of, not even through your Imam or Muhammad, the only way to heaven is by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who died and paid the penalty for our sins. Mark eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, at which weary and labor means the same thing, and I will give you rest. Jesus 
wants to give you rest and peace. Peace knowing. Knowing that you are going to go to heaven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Did you catch that? Believe in Jesus. Become baptized and put, and put your total faith in Jesus. Quran says, 354 and 830, that Allah is the best of deceivers. If he's the best of deceivers, how do you know he is not deceiving you? Think about that. If Allah is the best of deceivers, as 354 and 830 tells us that he is, because Allah admits to it, how can you be assured he is not lying to you? In 46 verse 9 of the Quran, Muhammad says that he does not know of his salvation and therefore cannot guarantee anybody else's. Wait a minute. Think about this Mr. and Miss Muslim. Muhammad was the best example of a Muslim, and yet he does not know of his salvation. Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Father, have came to earth willingly just so he can pay for the penalty of sin. Are you ready to be a Christian? Jesus is waiting, but there isn't much time left. The end is drawing near. And you don't want to be left behind. When you are ready, I know of many Christians that would love to help you be saved, and I am one of them. We are not here to hate you. If we were, if we did hate you, we wouldn't be doing what we are doing. We would just let you be and keep the gospel to ourselves. Instead, Jesus said there are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place. We all can live in heaven. We just need to accept. We just need to accept his invitation. Contact me when you are ready to give up Islam. Thank you, and have a great day. And don't forget, in 
the com in the description area. Please consider contributing to this particular ministry, either through Patreon or else through the PayPal. Both links are in the description box.